What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to G Miles World Podcast, and we're going to be closing out the week, week nine, Monday night football. It was the Patriots against the trash New York Jets, and it was a little bit more exciting than I think many of you would give the Jets credit. Me, myself, I was very intrigued because I didn't understand what was going on. I was like, yo, if the Patriots lose this game, it's going to say a lot about what's going on with Bill Belichick, but you can't really go back and say, yeah, if they had Tom, because Tom just got the bricks beat off of him by the Saints. So it's like, what's going to happen in this game? So let me go ahead and give the Jets some credit. Uh, to start start it off, Rashad Perriman, who's been a lost man in this league, uh, at one point was a high draft pick. Now uh, he's with the Jets, so like that's the way his life has gone. But look, the dude had two touchdowns, right? And it, it reminded me, this dude was a speedster coming into the league. I don't know if many of you guys remember who he was. Uh, he's you know he's bounced around a little bit, but that's the one thing. You know, guys like Teddy Ginn Jr., stuff like that. Like you know, there's guys that really are trash, but they have speed. He's one of those guys that can, you know, he'll just burn you. And I don't think the Patriots were ready for what they were doing. And it was very good uh, that the Jets actually utilized something that worked. Let, let's just be honest. This team is just, I, I, look, bro, watching the game, I didn't believe that they would even come close to beating the Patriots. Even though the Patriots, when we get to their lineup and everything, they don't really have a good team either. There's not a lot of, you know, standout guys that Cam Newton can utilize, similar to the reason why Brady had a lot of trouble uh, last year because he's not mobile and the guys couldn't get open. You know, Cam can move around a little bit, so it's a little bit different with the offense, but you're dealing with a lot of broken down players, in all honesty, uh, with the Patriots uh, wide receiving core and everything that's going on offensively. So, you know, other than like White, um, you know, the running back, it's not a lot going on with that offense other than Cam Newton. So we'll get to that in a second. But looking at Joe Flacco, a lot of people don't even want to see Donald anymore. Now, I, I think what happened was, let's go ahead and break this down. Uh, last year, Sam Donald, you know, he got, he contracted Mono somehow. Uh, allegedly, he was being nasty, doing something. I, I don't know what he was doing. But I think people never really got over that because, you know, people, they, they bring stuff up. If you make one mistake and then you suck at the game, like, people are not going to forgive you. If you're good, they'll actually forget about, you know, anything that you did, they'll forget about it. You know, there's a lot of players in the NFL that do whatever they want, and it's wild stuff, but they play well, so people don't really bring up a lot of the things that's really going on with them. But in this situation, Sam Donald is trash, so he has to be very, very careful with anything that he does. And, you know, looking at Joe Flacco, he made some plays yesterday where you probably say, yo, you know what? The Jets should have probably won this game. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, the Jets had a lot of opportunities, but that last drive uh, with that three and out was a hor bro, horrible. He takes a sack. Uh, at that time in the game, um, you would think he wasn't a veteran. You know, you got to throw that ball away. You got to keep your team in it, give him a chance. Uh, Flacco comes up with a big sack. Um, and he just, you know, you just see him and you're just like, yeah, now we know why the Ravens got rid of him. But it doesn't really matter, though. We all expected the Jets to do Jet things. And um, that's eventually what happened late in the game uh, when Cam Newton makes those plays. But I was very impressed uh, with Rashad Perriman. Because I don't know if this is going to continue. I don't know if he can extend his career. I don't know what's going to happen. But there was a lot of hype surrounding him when he came into the league. And he just never lived up to it. And, you know, honestly, does that mean that he can't become something that, you know, we, we recognize as a deep threat in this league where he just goes out there and he just dominates for the last three, four years uh, of his career? Maybe. I, I don't know how much, how much time he has left. But there's always space on an NFL squad for a burner. And this guy is a burner, and he will show you exactly what he's all about. Um, he's about 6'2", I believe. You know, you know, decent build. He could definitely get out there and do stuff. Obviously, you got Jamison Crowder. You know, he, bro, two receptions. He had two targets, one touchdown. So they were they were moving the ball around a little bit. But Flacco was fluco when it all comes down to everything. Now Cam Newton, thirty. What is it? Twenty-seven to thirty-five, two hundred and seventy-four yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Right. So you know, he carried the ball ten times, got sixteen yards. So the Jets were pretty much stout enough to make sure, like, look, this guy is not going to beat us. If you if you watched it, you would see they they were all over Cam Newton. And when they hit these bigger quarterbacks, they try to hurt them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, bro, you coming in as a ball carrier, these defensive linemen, they know when you're a quarterback, they can't really do much. But when you go and talk about you want to rush, it gets crazy. It gets really, really crazy. So, you know, with the way that the game was, you could see Damian Harris, uh, Damian Harris was their top rusher. All right, 14 carries, 71 yards. Rex Burkhead coming in with a touchdown, 56 yards, 12 carries. Um, it's not really that type of a team where 
they have that star running back. They just work with what's there, and Bill Belichick has been able to successfully get away with it. And we're seeing that, yeah, he can still win without Tom Brady. It's just a lot more tough because Tom Brady will pick you apart. You know, that that's he'll sit in the pocket and just be like, yo, look, I'm about to dot you all day, then I'm going to pick your moms up. Like, Tom Brady's a different breed. Uh, Cam Newton, obviously, is not that type of quarterback. So what I'm trying to explain is, like, Jacoby Myers, right? The dude had 12 receptions for 169 yards. So that was a guy that, you know, Cam Newton was able to, you know, see, get open, whatever. De Demir Bird, uh, James White had 24 yards. Uh, Demir Bird had 65 yards on five receptions. He had nine targets. Uh, some of you might, you know, think that Cam Newton made some bad throws. Some people think that Damian Bird should have caught some, whatever it is. But the way that he just uses regular no-name guys and they just go out there and win games, is, is it's outrageous. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The Patriots can easily have their, their record reversed and be five and three because they've been in every game. They just down the stretch, you know, you had a fumble, you had a stop on fourth down against the Seahawks. There's been some things that's been going on where it's like, come on, dude, you got to pull it out. But this is a situation where it's all new. You know, Bill Belichick was willing to bet on Cam Newton, um, you know, over Stead and, you know, uh, Stead or whatever his name is. And uh, pretty much now he has to live with that result. Uh, I think... In all honesty, he's very, very happy that Tom Brady's gone because it, it makes him it makes him feel relieved that now he can rebuild because everything that goes on, I still have not heard, other than Bruce Arians, nobody has blamed Tom Brady for poor play. People just, you know, you know, put it under the bridge. Oh yeah, you know the team. No, it's Tom Brady. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Tom Brady has a certain reputation where he can't do any wrong, but he played horrible against the Saints. It's easier for Bill Belichick now to come into work and just be like, you know what, we can build and it's more fresh. So I feel like the Patriots are doing a lot with less. If you were able to give Cam Newton some real weapons, th this team would be really, really good. I'm just I'm just putting that out there. If there was a way, we don't, we don't know what's going to happen next year. We have no idea how it's working out. But if there was a way to give this team some weapons, you know, I think Cam Newton can make it work. And that, that last second throw where he finds him right in the middle of the zone for the walk-off field goal, it was a huge play for Cam Newton. That, people don't understand, coming up for last week, everybody hated him, you know, and then now he goes out there, he does that. That's a huge uh, step up uh, to what they're trying to do. So, you know, losing to the Jets is never cool. So I, I, you know, I just said to myself, you know what, no matter what they're doing, I was watching the game, I'm like, Jets winning, but they won't win the game. You know what I'm saying? Because they're the Jets and they suck. And that's just what it is. And that's how it turned out to be. So congratulations to the Patriots. Congratulations to Cam Newton. Uh, I can't wait to see what you guys finish off with. I think... Many people think that they're done. I, I wouldn't bet against Bill Belichick, though. I'm going to go ahead and see how the season you know, ends off before I even say anything else. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. Enjoy your day. One love, y'all. Yo.